folks, welcome back to AP Unfiltered. I wanted to wait and take a second before addressing the killing of Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, for a few reasons. One of which I wanted to get my own thoughts in order, but also because I had a sneaky, sneaky feeling that the Biden-Harris administration wasn't going to be particularly pleased, and I wanted to see what their response was going to be. So buckle in, we're going to go deep on this one. I'm Aaron Prager, and this is AP Unfiltered. Folks, before we start the show, you know the drill. Please do me a favor real quick. Hit the like button on the video, the follow button on the channel, the subscribe button if you're over on YouTube. Share the show with a friend. Take the URL, post your social medias. And if you'd like to become a member over here on YouTube, please, for $5 a month, the link is in the description of the video. On the main page or on the videos page, $5 a month gets you access to a Discord as well as a couple other perks, different tiers if you'd like to. But let's get into it. So ladies and gentlemen, over the past weekend, Israel conducted strikes to eliminate the leader of Hezbollah in the north, Hassan Nasrallah, an evil, evil human being. And this is on the heels of, by the way, one of the most tactically brilliant plans, military operations in modern history. Now, some backstory on this real quick before we get into this insane story involving the Biden-Harris administration. These plans have been in place for a very, very long time, mind you. Mossad had created a pager company knowing that eventually Hezbollah would have to cease using cell phones for fear of Israeli intelligence being able to track it. And in those pages were a small amount of explosives each. Once this was triggered, we all saw what happened. Hezbollah then had to move to walkie-talkies. Then those were detonated as well. So no cell phones, no pagers, no walkies, right? None of those were able to be used for the terrorists any longer. This then forces Hezbollah leadership to have to meet in person. And when they do, Israel is able to strike them at their meetups. And finally, this all culminated with taking out the leader of the organization while Israel amassed a whopping, you ready for it? Zero soldier casualties in the process. Like I said, it's the most well-executed and targeted military operation in modern history. But now it's time for the response from the Biden-Harris administration. And the reason I always throw Harris in there is because up until she was coronated as the Democratic candidate, the entire administration called her an integral part of the and the last person in the room, mind you, on things such as Afghanistan. This is what Joe Biden had to say. Take a look. Please. I'm going to stick with this. What's that? I'm going to stick with this subject, but go ahead. I've, I've well, it's the fact that Israel may be now launching a limited <clears throat> operation into Lebanon. Are you aware of that? Are you comfortable with their plan? I'm more aware than you might know, and I'm comfortable with them stopping. We should have a ceasefire now. Thank you. From the Daily Mail, Biden shares his blunt message to Israel before its imminent ground invasion of Lebanon, and U.S. Embassy frantically works how to get Americans out of Beirut. President Biden gave an emphatic answer when asked if he was comfortable with Israel's plans as the U.S. ally masses forces on the border with Lebanon, and it stopped well short of an endorsement. Biden got asked Monday at the White House if he was comfortable with what is being called a limited invasion. His answer took that word and instead called on Israel to hold back. Quote, I am more aware than you might know, and I'm comfortable with them stopping. We should have a ceasefire now, Biden said. It came hours after Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said, quote, diplomacy remains the best and only path to achieving greater stability in the Middle East. Well, I'm sorry. That's just not true. The language that works actually in the Middle East is, I have a big stick you do not want to find out, also known as F around and find out. Diplomacy was on the table. If you remember, for people who remember the Trump years, who didn't just block it out like a petulant child who was scared of the boogeyman, diplomacy was on the table between Israel and the Sunni states through the Abraham Accords. But then we all know what happened. Joe Biden came into office and Iran continued to funnel its money into its proxy groups, the tentacles of Iran, if you will, Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis, which led us to October the 7th, the most deadly day in Israel since for Jews since the Holocaust. In an attempt to break this up and make it more pitting Jews against Muslims than anything else. And guess what? It kind of worked in a way. Iran's plan kind of worked because now you're seeing all the sympathy from the Hamasals on the college campuses and all these insane people making these insane statements. But like I said before, Iran is the crux of this. And now they have lost two pieces of their line of offensive capabilities in Hamas and in Hezbollah. Jared Kushner, by the way, released a great piece on X explaining this. Take a look. It's a bit of a long statement, but it's very important to read through it. So I'm going to try to make this as engaging as possible for you, but we need to hear this. 
Jared Kushner on X. September 27th is the most important day in the Middle East since the Abraham Accords breakthrough. I have spent countless hours studying Hezbollah, and there is not an expert on earth who thought that what Israel has done to decapitate and degrade them was possible. This is significant because Iran is now fully exposed. The reason why their nuclear facilities have not been destroyed, despite air defense systems, is because Hezbollah has been a loaded gun pointed at Israel. It has, folks. It has. This has been, It's been a big thing, the reason why we have not, why Israel has not taken out Iran's nuclear program. Iran has spent the last 40 years building this capability as its deterrent. President Trump would often say, quote, Iran has never won a war, but they've never lost a negotiation. The Islamic Republic's regime is much tougher when risking Hamas, Hezbollah, Syrian, and Houthi lives than when risking their own. Their foolish efforts to assassinate President Trump and hack his campaign reek of desperation and are hardening a large coalition against them. Iranian leadership is stuck in the old Middle East while their neighbors in the GCC are sprinting toward the future by investing in their populations and infrastructure. They are becoming dynamic magnets for talent and investment while Iran falls further behind. As the Iranian proxies and threats dissipate, regional security and prosperity will rise for Christians, Muslims, and Jews alike. This is a very important point. He's 100% correct and he hits the nail on the head. Israel now finds itself with a threat from Gaza mostly neutralized and the opportunity to neutralize Hezbollah in the north. Exactly. So why are the Biden administration calling for a ceasefire at this point? This close. And they're like, you know what? Let's call for a ceasefire. Let them regroup once again. It's nonsense. It's an unfortunate how we got here, but maybe there can be a silver lining in the end. Anyone who is calling for a ceasefire in the north is wrong. There is no going back for Israel. They cannot afford now to not finish the job and completely dismantle the arsenal that has been aimed at them. Correct, because every single time, by the way, folks, every single time that the UN has gotten involved and said, hey, listen, we need to have a demilitarized zone. Essentially, you cannot put your weapons there uh, uh, in the, in, uh, right in Lebanon, the south of Lebanon, north of Israel area. Guess what? Hezbollah immediately then moves back in. That's what they do. They move back in immediately and arm it to the teeth, pointing at Israel. After the uh, Jared Kushner's tweet goes on saying, after the brilliant rapid fire tactical successes of the pagers, radios, and targeting of leadership, Hezbollah's massive weapon cache is unguarded and unmanned, Most, of it, which I believe has just been taken out also this week. Most of Hezbollah's fighters are hiding in their tunnels. Anyone still around was not important enough to carry a pager or be invited to the leadership meeting. Iran is reeling as well, insecure and unsure how deeply its own intelligence has been penetrated. Failing to take full advantage of this opportunity to neutralize the threat is irresponsible. Yes, folks, because once again, these people are enemies of the United States, wish them dead. They call Israel the little evil while they call the U.S. and the U.S. Uh, value system the big evil. Jerry Kushner goes on to say, I've been hearing some amazing stories about how Israel has been collecting intelligence over the past 10 months with some brilliant technology and crowdsourcing initiatives. But today, with the confirmed killing of Nasrallah and the and at least 16 top commanders eliminated in just nine days, which that's a great record right there, was the first day I started thinking about the Middle East without Iran's fully loaded arsenal aimed at Israel. So many more positive outcomes are possible. This is a moment to stand behind the peace-seeking nation of Israel and the large portion of the Lebanese who have been plagued by Hezbollah and who want to return to the times when their country was thriving in Beirut, a cosmopolitan city. Yes, it was known as the Paris of the Middle East, and then Hezbollah comes in, and all these different Iranian proxies come in, and what do you see happen? It turns into a hellhole. The main issue, be it, which makes it bad for the people who live in Lebanon, the Lebanese themselves, a lot of them are cheering that Nasrallah was killed. The main issue between Lebanon and Israel is Iran. Otherwise, there is a lot of benefit for the people of both countries from working together. The right move now for America would be to tell Israel to finish the job. It's long overdue, and it's not only Israel's fight. Thank you very much. More than 40 years ago, Hezbollah killed 241 U.S. military personnel, including 220 Marines. That remains the single deadliest day for the U.S. Marine Corps since the Battle of Iwo Jima. Later that same day, Hezbollah killed 58 French paratroopers. And now, over the past six weeks or so, Israel has eliminated as many terrorists on the U.S. list of wanted terrorists as the U.S. has done in the last 20 years, including Ibrahim Akil, the leader of Hezbollah's Islamic Jihad organization who masterminded the 1983 killing of those Marines. It's a powerful statement. I think he, and anybody listening to that understands how well he was able to put that together. But Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, I got to get back to this now. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have called for a ceasefire at every single step. Why is this? It's almost like they don't want Israel to be able to defend itself and root out the enemies of not just them, but the United States as well. Have they forgotten the Marines? 
like Jared Kushner was talking about, and servicemen that Hezbollah has killed. Every single time Israel has had a victory, the Biden-Harris administration is quickly to jump up and scream, it's time for a ceasefire. You're right? When they started to get Hamas on the, on the ropes, let's have a ceasefire. Why do we do that? When they get Hezbollah on the ropes, let's have a ceasefire. When, they re- when, when Israel was able to rescue a couple hostages, let's have a ceasefire. It's, the logic makes no sense. Let them regroup? Why, why, why would Israel let them do that? Even now, when Israel seems to be getting very close to completing its mission finally, Hezbollah is in shambles, and their leader is taken out, right? Hamas is in shambles, and Yahya Sinwar, presumably, is in a tunnel somewhere, surrounded by hostages, if he's even still alive, by the way. We don't know if he's still alive. But the idea of a ceasefire now, what on earth are you talking about? Every time in the past there's been a, a call, uh, been a ceasefire, that there has actually been a ceasefire, Hezbollah and Hamas have regrouped become stronger, remilitarized, more rockets, more funding, more attacks. They cannot be tolerated any longer. Israel knows this, and anybody in the U.S. with a functioning brain and prefrontal cortex can see this as well. The conclusion to this is Hezbollah and Hamas need to be rooted out full stop. This has been the eventuality we've been staring at since the beginning. This is what has needed to take place since the very beginning. They must be rooted out and the U.S. needs to stay the hell out of Israel's way. Why would the why the U.S. would, by the way, want a terrorist organization who openly wishes for its own demise to be allowed to regroup doesn't quite make a lot of sense to me. But nonetheless, the fact that the Biden-Harris administration is so quick to call for a ceasefire now, while we're at this stage of the game, I believe says more than anything, and their message is very, very loud. But listen, folks, it's like I for you do. If you appreciate this type of content and you want to see more like it, do me a favor. Hit the like button on the video. Really hit the like button on the video. If you'd like to become a member for $5 a month, the link is in the description of the video. You become a member over here on YouTube, access to a Discord, a bunch of other perks. I appreciate you guys being here. Staying informed is an American and moral obligation. And until next time, catch y'all on the next one.